Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for your service. Um, let's start by talking about Iran. Uh, General McKenzie, could you give your thoughts as to the short-term and long-term threat posed by Iran? Senator, the, the, the most significant long and short-term uh, threat in the, Central Com in the Central Command Theater is Iran and Iran's ambitions both in the theater and also to a degree globally. How do you assess the impact of the president's decision pulling out of the Iranian nuclear deal? Sir, as we uh, spoke just a few moments ago, I would say that Iran's uh, malign behavior in the theater hasn't abated from before, during, or after the, the nuclear deal in the other domains that which I see, which is their development of ballistic missiles, their activities both in Syria and in Yemen and in other nations across the AOR. So, so let's take those one, one piece at a time. In terms of ballistic missiles, uh, what are we seeing? What's their capability and what is the threat of those ballistic missiles? Uh, they, you know, Iran has chosen to substitute ballistic missiles, both short and medium and long range, for their paucity of aviation assets. Mm -hmm. so they have an aggressive developmental program going forward that would include an aspiration to develop an ICBM. And how close do you assess they are to having an ICBM that, that, that could hit the continental United States? Well, they're testing, and uh, we watch their space launch vehicle with great interest because, as we've seen in other places around the world, that is technology that is easily transferred from a space launch vehicle to an ICBM of, of significant range. And what would be the national security threat posed to the United States if Iran were to acquire nuclear weapons? Should Iran acquire nuclear weapons, I think that uh, they're, they've been inimically uh, opposed to us for, for many years. You would always, and so you can only speculate what they might do with those weapons, but I can't imagine that anything good would proceed from Iran possessing a weapon of great striking power and ability to destroy. How would it impact the region if Iran were to become a nuclear power? Senator, I believe it would be a destabilizing in the region if Iran procured nuclear weapons. It pro would possibly lead to other nations pursuing nuclear weapons. It would lead to the worst of all outcomes for us, which would be widespread proliferation of those weapons across the theater. And describe for this committee Iran's conduct in terms of spreading and fomenting and funding terror. Senator, we see it active in Yemen. Uh, actually, the, the humanitarian tragedy that we confront in Yemen is the child of Iranian ambitions in Yemen and their support for the Houthis and trying to create a, les a uh, Hezbollah-like state there. So that proceeds directly from them. We see the same activities in Syria as well, where they are uh, actively supported in, uh, actively participating in supporting the government of Bashar al-Assad and, uh, and all that proceeds from that and the terror that he has inflicted on his own people. Just to cite two examples, Senator. And what's been the state of the Iranian economy following our withdrawal from the nuclear deal? Pressure remains on the Iranian economy. Uh, as you know, Senator, it's hard to see there. Uh, we, look, we look, but it's hard to, hard to know. But I believe there is pressure on the Iranian economy. It remains to be seen if they're going to be able to, to, to work with other, other countries that will seek to circumvent uh, uh, s some of the sanctions that are on them. Don't know the answer to that, and I'm probably not the best person to describe that, but I believe there is pressure on the Iranian economy. But even with that pressure on the economy, have you seen any indications of their scaling back their terror activity, funding of Hezbollah and, other, and Houthis and other terrorists? I've seen nothing appreciable change, Senator. Um, what's your assessment? We, we saw earlier this year, significant protests against the Ayatollah and the Mullahs. Uh, what's your assessment of the degree of unrest and dissatisfaction among the Iranian people uh, with, with the regime? Senator, it's an authoritarian regime that responds very harshly. Uh, and so I, I haven't seen anything, and I defer to the intelligence community for a better look at that, but I haven't seen anything that I would characterize as spreading or essentially threatening uh, the, the, the fundamental nature of the Iranian regime. Now, we've certainly seen in the past that, that Iran has a long history of, of making promises and, and then breaking those promises. Um, what do you see as the likelihood that they either have initiated or will initiate again uh, a nuclear program working to develop uh, nuclear weapons? Senator, I think we should watch very closely we should watch very closely uh, that possibility. 
Gentlemen, thank you both for your service.